All praise is due to Allah, the exalted and most high. He created all things, completed their forms, decreed all matters, and guided each creature to what suits it best. I praise Allah as He is perfect in every way. I am grateful to Him, I repent to Him, and I ask His forgiveness. He deserves all praise, all goodness lies in His hand, and all matters return to Him. He deserves praise that makes Him pleased, praise when He is pleased, and praise even after He is pleased. He deserves praise in all circumstances. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I testify that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant, chosen messenger, and an individual whom Allah granted more love than others. He conveyed Allah's message, fulfilled, fulfilled all he was entrusted with, remained sincere to his followers, and struggled for Allah as he rightfully deserves. That messenger left us upon a path so clear that its night is just like its day and anyone who strays from it will end up ruined. May Allah grant an abundance of commendation and protection to His Messenger, the Messenger's Immaculate Family, the Messenger's wives who were the mothers of the people of Iman, the Messenger's esteemed companions, and all who continue following their path until the day of recompense. My dear audience, I counsel all of you, as well as myself, to observe taqwa of Allah by fulfilling His commands and avoiding His prohibitions, whether in public or private. I further counsel you with adherence to Allah's book and the guidance of Allah's messenger. May Allah grant Him commendation and protection. Those two sources provide light to see through darkness and safety at times of trial. No one who follows their teachings will suffer loss, and no one who abandons them would attain true success. Obey Allah and the messenger so that you would attain mercy. Servants of Allah, all people of knowledge and sound intellect agree about the fact that the jama'ah, the united collective which adheres to what is correct, is a mercy, whereas being divided is a source of torment. They also agree that being with others is better than remaining isolated, that breaking away from the collective represents discord and desertion, that spears are hard to break when a number of them are put together, while each one can be easily broken if left on its own, and that a person is weak on his own, but strong when his brothers are with him. The foregoing ideas conform with the logic of individuals who are perceptive and knowledgeable. Furthermore, they provide a foundation for populating the earth in a way that pleases Allah. He said, if someone opposes a messenger after guidance has become clear to him and follows other than the path of the people who have Iman, we shall leave him to what he has chosen and punish him in the hellfire the worst destination. In addition, Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, stated, any time a group of three people in any village or rural area fails to have the congregational prayer established among them, shaitan will overpower them. You must adhere to the jama'ah, the congregation which adheres to what is correct, because it is indeed only the lone sheep which the wolf seeks as his prey. This was collected by Abu Dawood. The Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, also said, You must adhere to the jama'ah and beware of division, because shaitan is with one and he is farther away from two. If a person wants to be admitted to the expanses of Jannah, he must remain united with the jama'ah. If a person feels happy when he performs righteous deeds and distressed when he commits sins, that is a person of iman. This is collected by Tirmidhi. Allah certainly sent all of His prophets for the purpose of establishing the religion He prescribed for them, bringing about unity based on obedience to Allah, and eliminating division and opposition. Allah said, You must all adhere to the rope of Allah, the Qur'an and Sunnah, and you must not be divided among yourselves. Ibn Jarir narrated that Qatad had commented, Allah dislikes for you to be divided. He warned you against division and He prohibited you from it. In contrast, he is pleased with you obeying the leader and authority and remaining as a united collective that adheres to what is correct. Therefore, you should be pleased with what Allah is pleased with for you, to the utmost of your ability, and there is no strength except by Allah. Servants of Allah, if you grasp that all, you should realize that communities which have awareness are the ones that make it a priority to preserve their togetherness and protect their unity from being compromised. They also consider instances of individuals breaking away from their collective to be instances of division and discord. Servants of Allah, 
The discord being referred to here is that of isolating oneself away from the collective which adheres to what is correct, whether by way of beliefs, thoughts, statements, deeds, or appearances. Depending on the context, it can represent opposition to either the truth itself, the collective who does what is correct, or sound morals and conduct in general. There are two general categories of the aforementioned discord, one with the heart and the other with the limbs. Discord with the heart comprises harboring corrupt beliefs and thoughts that oppose the course of truth followed by people of Tawheed and Iman. Discord with the limbs may take the form of either forsaking something or doing something. Forsaking, comprising breaking away from the collective that does what is correct and refusing to obey the leader whom Allah placed over that collective. That course is the one followed by the sectarian faction known as the Khawarij. It is a dangerous course and one that produces far-reaching ills. The scholars of Islam unanimously denounce that course, warn against it, and hold that it is blameworthy discord which should not be treated lightly. This is because the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, decisively stated, if a person rebels against obedience to the leader and authority, that person will meet Allah on the day of the resurrection with no evidence to support himself. That person will meet Allah on the day of resurrection with no evidence to support himself. And if a person dies without a pledge of allegiance to the leader and authority, his death would be like that of passing away during the era of ignorance prior to Islam. This was collected by Muslim. Discord by doing something may take the form of issuing anomalous edicts about issues related to Islam and its teachings, as well as there being clear discrepancies between those edicts and legitimate fit differences. Such edicts and views are called anomalous because they oppose clear scholarly consensus and do not fall in line with either the objectives of Islam's teachings or sound intellectual reasoning. This form of discord exists in every era and location. Its advocates exploit it to undermine the reliability of religious edicts in various communities and to confuse people about Islam's actual teachings. Consequently, people mix up various matters and then become confused about the reliability of edicts they already have with them, and there is neither movement nor strength except by Allah. Discord by doing something may also take the form of deliberately using attire that differs from what people usually wear so as to make oneself prominent among them. Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, if someone wears attire for the purpose of making himself prominent in this world, Allah will make him wear attire that degrades him on the day of resurrection. This is collected by Ahmed and Abu Dawood. Attire for making oneself prominent refers to clothing that leads to arrogance and reflects an unusual degree of extravagance. It also refers to clothing that leads to feigned humility and reflects an unusual degree of restraint or perhaps deprivation. The Salaf, the foremost generations of Islam, disliked both those forms of prominence. May Allah grant all of you his protection. You should also realize that discord by doing something can take the form of opposing the natural disposition that Allah instilled within all people regarding their inclinations, as well as opposing the directives he prescribed concerning marriage. Allah mentioned the directive concerning a man marrying one woman and being fair to her, and he further added, you may seek to marry other women whom Allah has permitted you to marry. If you wish, you may marry two, three, or four. I beseech Allah to grant all of you his protection. There are forms of discord which some people choose for themselves as a way of life. But in reality, those forms contradict the way that Allah made things to be in this world as a whole, let alone just among humans themselves or only according to Islam's teachings, sound reasoning, or innate disposition of all humans. Even more alarming is when the proponents of that discord go beyond defending it and in fact proactively seek to have it become a normal part of life by advocating the replacement of words which reflect strangeness with ones that reflect sameness. That is done to lighten the force with which the words strike people's ears so that they might become accustomed to them and then mistake them to express genuine personal freedoms even if with some amount of fear or shame. I swear by Allah many times over that what such people do contravenes the teachings of religion in general and is impermissible according to the teachings of all the scriptures of Allah revealed. The Prophet Lut said to the men among his people, Is it the case that you go to the males among people and forsake those whom your Lord created to be wise for you? In reality, you are a people who transgress the bounds that your Lord has set. 
in light of the severity of the offense committed by those people in terms of opposing the disposition Allah instilled within all humans, Allah subjected them to a punishment that bore a similarity. He made the highest parts of their land become the lowest, opposite to where they previously were. And He also sent upon them a rain of stones. O Allah, we seek refuge in pleasing you against anything that displeases you. We seek refuge in the well-being you grant against being afflicted with your punishment. And we seek refuge with you against yourself. We cannot praise you sufficiently. You are as you have praised yourself. Allah deserves praise that is abundant, sincere, and filled with goodness. That is what our Lord loves and is pleased with. I implore Him to grant commendation and protection to His final chosen messenger. Servants of Allah, you must continue to observe taqwa of Allah and adhere to the jama'ah of the people of Islam, their collective which adheres to what is correct. The hand of Allah is with the jama'ah, and if someone breaks away from it, he will take himself to his own ruin. I implore Allah to grant all of you His protection. You must realize that all discord is blameworthy when it entails deviating from innate human disposition, opposing sound knowledge, and isolating oneself away from the collective that does what is correct. Breaking away from the correct course in any of those ways reflects heedlessness, which in turn produces deviation. That deviation is fueled by naivety, arrogance, and insolence all at the same time. As for the course followed by the jama'ah, it does not contain detrimental consequences and its people are not mere yes-men who surrender their minds to others who do not deserve to be followed. Adhering to the course of the jama'ah without breaking away from it is the epitome of sound reasoning, wisdom, knowledge, and protection from harm. As for discord and breaking away, those have their causes just like all other ills. Some of the causes have to do with the person himself and some with his surroundings. Causes having to do with the person himself include lacking inhibition based on Islam's teachings that restrains him from wrong, as well as being full of oneself and desiring to contradict others so as to attain prominence. Causes having to do with the person's surroundings include being in bad company and around negative influences, while at the same time on which people rely when searching for wisdom. Social media in all its various forms has a major impact on the types of departure from what is right which people fall into. That happens through content circulated which opposes the collective that does what is correct and content which contravenes wisdom, reasoning, logic, Islam's teachings, and decency in general. People end up following unverified claims which are circulated and may pertain to matters concerning public safety or danger. Opposing the majority who do what is correct and then being on one's own is blameworthy. And this is something that remains the case in practically every time and place. However, in the narrow context of events that will happen towards the end of this world, being on one's own will end up being praiseworthy as indicated by texts in the authentic sunnah. At that time, a person may find himself alone and adhering to the truth. A person may find himself alone in adhering to the truth and sound guidance, while the majority of people would adhere to the opposite. During such circumstances, it would be praiseworthy to differ from the people and remain on one's own. As mentioned by the Prophet, may Allah grant commendation or protection. In his statement, there will soon come a time when the best property a Muslim has would be some sheep which he takes with him as he goes to the tops of mountains and areas of rainfall. He would do that to flee with his religion from afflictions. This is collected by Bukhari. In a hadith narrated by Hudayfa, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation or protection, mentioned trials that would take place towards the end of this world. Hudayfa inquired, what do you instruct me to do if I reach that time? The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, replied, remain united with the jama'ah of the Muslims and their leader. Hudayfa further inquired, what if a jama'ah or leader? He replied, avoid all of those factions that appear, even if it means that you bite onto the roots of a tree until death finds you in that state. This was collected by Bukhari and Muslim. 
O Allah, we seek refuge with you against all apparent and hidden forms of strife. We seek refuge with you against opposing the messenger after God has become clear to us and against following other than the path of the people who have Iman. We implore you for steadfastness in adhering to your religion, in being united with the collective of Muslims who adhere to what is correct as well as their leader, and in remaining that way until you take us back to yourself. And we implore you to do so without causing us to be negligent or afflicting us with trials. In conclusion, servants of Allah, bear in mind the instruction Allah gave us when He said, People of Iman invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. O Allah, grant your commendation and protection to your worshipping servant and messenger Muhammad. O Allah, be pleased with his four successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all of his companions and all who continue following their path until the day of reckoning. O Allah, grant strength to Islam and those who submit to you in Islam. Weaken shirk and those engaged in it. O Allah, we implore you to purify our souls and grant us taqwa. We call upon you, our guardian Lord. O Allah, the Lord of all creation, grant us safety in our nations and make our leaders, people who are righteous and people who have reverential fear of you, observe taqwa of you and do what pleases you. O Allah, the ever-living, self-sufficient sustainer of all, we beseech you to guide our leader to the words and deeds which you love and are pleased with. O Allah, guide him, his deputy, and their aides and advisors. Our Lord is perfect in every way. He grants protection to all of his messengers. And the last of our prayers is that all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all creation. <laughs>